This video is brought to you by Keeps.com. Stay tuned to find out more. If checks were clearing, right, you would not see me standing here with an IRS bill and living check to check. So you wait, do realize that Elliot Spitzer ran through this radio station with a fine tooth comb and, and the whole f city for payola. You know the f got in trouble? The program director at Power 105, he got fired. There's probably been half a million to two million dollars that got spent on radio promotion for the box. Now, if payola didn't exist, why do you need to spend half a million to two million for a song? Well, Roddy Rich is on Atlantic. You know what Atlantic's gonna do? If we buy a bunch of ads, like regular ads, we'll buy ads for a free concert that supposedly Roddy's doing. We're gonna buy a lot of slots, so, you know, we'll give him like $300,000. You have $300,000 worth of incentive to play the record. You don't need to play the record, but you ain't, we ain't gonna keep with you if you take out $300,000 and play the record. So really, you abide by the rules and pretty much you're paying for the record. It's like almost a wink wink. Outlawed by the FCC since the mid 30s, payola basically equates to paying for airplay. Parallel to gangsters slipping newspaper editors an envelope of cash for favorable coverage or influencers taking huge sums of money to promote a product, as long as they disclose that they've taken the money, then everything's cool. Otherwise, they'd be approaching the legally dubious world of payola. As it relates to hip hop, there were no shortage of times where fans or even artists believed that a track's radio presence came from a bribe rather than the DJ's personal preference. Where it was estimated that low level DJs made up to $50 a week in bribes during the 70s, inflation meant that by the time hip hop rose to commercial prominence, the sums that were being forked over for 100 spins a week exploded to such a degree that labels have been forced to pay out settlements in the millions after getting caught red handed. And just like any illegal activity, it even has informants. In the wake of Nas being prohibited from playing at Hot 97 Summer Jam due to his relationship with Jay-Z, Nas went on an iconic tirade that insinuated that Payola was suppressing real art in favor of supporting those who lined their pockets. That the wrong people are in power. You know, his hip-hop thing comes from the streets. We need our freedom. If y'all if y'all ain't gonna go for this fight for y'all freedom, y'all gonna be like them sucker artists that just go up to the radio station and kiss ASS just to get some airtime or just suck flex or suck clue in them trying to get on their best side so they could play your record. When Nas, Godson, answers him back, they team up with the evil. See, it's all, a whole evil empire funded by a bunch of other evil empires, Def Jam, one of them, that's giving them money to play all their artist records. Meanwhile, the struggling artists have to try to recreate records that sound like Jay, and they're destroying themselves. They don't, if you listen to 90% of the rappers, they don't even, they're not even creative. Courtesy of Jay's record company allegedly buying off prominent DJs, whether that's through the champagne gifts that Angie Martinez is said to have received, or through more nefarious means, Nas believed Rockefeller turned Hot 97 into Hove 97, which meant that, in a sense, the power of payola was enough to not only boost one artist's plays, but set the tone for the rest of their playlisting agenda. So I wanna take a quick break to thank our friends at Keeps.com. For anyone that's endured a battle with thinning or receding hair, you know that it can take an immense toll on your self-esteem. Even if it hasn't affected you as of yet, two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. As it turns out, the best way to prevent that is by getting ahead of the problem. Keeps excels at doing just that, retaining the hair that you have, and in some cases, promoting growth within the 100,000 men that have put their faith in the product. And in most most cases, results will begin to surface within just four to six months. Years ago, taking action against hair loss will come with the added stigma of having to go to the doctor's office, get signed off on a prescription, and agonizingly wait in line for it. Courtesy of Keeps, all of these additional stresses have been banished as this consistently five-star rated product will be delivered right to your door every three months. So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash HHM or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Remember when Nas went crazy on the, on the radio and he said, Hot 97 is taking money to play up these records and da-da-da-da-da. And everyone was like, Nas is insane. And Elliot Spitz was like, I'm going to look into that. And Elliot Spitz went in there and he was like, hey, these guys are taking payola. And they ended the practice, the age-old practice of payola in radio. <laughs> 
As payola became public knowledge and the internet replaced radio's position as the number one source of music discovery, there was a sense that the days where record companies could procure hits was a thing of the past. And in a heated dispute with rap radar's B Dot, Hot 97 Zebro refuted the idea that payola still exists. If checks were clearing, right? You would not see me standing here with an IRS bill and living check to check. So you wait, do realize that Elliot Spitzer ran through this radio station with a fine tooth comb and, and the whole f city for payola. You know the f got in trouble? The program director at Power 105, he got fired. Once thought to be banished, the issue of payola retreated for many years. But as hip hop rose to the US's leading genre and new stars began to emerge, there's now a renewed interest in how promotion takes shape in the modern era. Just as J. Cole rapped, how many fake in their streams get in their place for machines and revealed that behind the smoke and mirrors, they ain't really big as they seem, others began to point fingers at the online world and suggest that the legacy of Payola lives on. As a result, it means that where Spitzer thought that they'd killed it once and for all, new methods of payola that come without the federal regulations have begun to open up and created new ways to pay for play. There's probably been half a million to two million dollars that got spent on radio promotion for the box. Now, if payola didn't exist, why do you need to spend half a million to two million for a song? Well, Roddy Rich is on Atlantic. You know what Atlantic's gonna do? If we buy a bunch of ads, like regular ads, I don't know, we'll buy the ads for the album that's coming later. Or I don't know, we'll buy the ads for a free concert that supposedly Roddy's doing. We're gonna buy a lot of slots, so, you know, we'll give him like $300,000. You have $300,000 worth of incentive to play the record. You don't need to play the record, but you ain't, we ain't gonna keep with you if you take out $300,000 and play the record. So really, you abide by the rules and pretty much you're paying for the record. It's like almost a wink wink. Allowing them to enter a realm where it may garner the same result as Payola, but in a non-traditional format, Ak isn't trying to expose or defame Roddy, but acknowledging that something's going on behind the scenes. Yet in other cases, accusations of pay for play have been used to fuel beef. In the midst of a rant on the industry's crooked ways during the St. Pablo tour, Kanye took aim at both DJ Khaled and Drake for the prominence of the 2016 hit for free. Real people, real program directors with wives and kids that love music, that can't play what they want to play because they've been paid to play that over and over and over. Is it just me? But did you hear that song so many times? You see you want to pay it for free. Hey, give me, hey, hey, you know what it is though? Because, hey, I love Drake. I love talent. But they set that song up, bro. Ever the free thinker, Kanye's issues came from what he saw as a fundamentally corrupt system rather than the artists who benefited. But in the case of a few that taken a hold of hip hop's attention, some critics believe that Cardi's fame was also purchased. Since Bodak Yellow catapulted her from bubbling MC to commercial mainstay, Cardi B has had to contend with issues around her authenticity. On top of facing questions around how much of her album was penned by her, Cardi has been confronted with claims that she, or more specifically Atlantic Records, had prepaid her path to stardom. Sparked by Funk Flex declaring that he'd rejected her label's advances while claiming that Cardi's team and many other artists in the beginning of their career pay DJs to play records and say that they are hot, Cardi quickly combated the claims and suggested that if she did this, everyone else would too. Then, in the wake of her explosive run-in with Nicki Minaj at the Harper's Bazaar Icon Party, the leader of the Barbs took to her queen radio and maintained that Cardi had leased a career. Because she has built her career off of sympathy and payola. To date, there's been no investigation into these claims, and Cardi's team have denied them at all costs. And while it's been suggested that her manager, Clenard Raphael, had harassed and bothered radio DJs, that's just poor business practice and is in no way illegal. However, where the bizarre thing about Cardi's situation comes from is that in the era where digital is king, this could be an unnecessary risk when all you've really got to do is pay for primetime spots in the streaming world. Although it doesn't run the risk of the same sort of legal troubles that slipping a radio DJ money for extra spins would, many industry critics feel that payola continues to run rife in the digital era. 
and as early as 2009, the arrival of streaming services allowed underground and mainstream music to reach audiences while bypassing the traditional promo model. As a result, services like Spotify could have presented a problem for major artists and their labels when it comes to retaining their advantage over artists without the industry machine behind them. But as it turns out, their support can also come at a price. Unveiled in 2018, Drake's Scorpion campaign on Spotify is a prime example of what sort of large-scale offense can be achieved on streaming services, if you have the deep pockets, that is. Prompting anger from some users that resented Drake being shoved down their throats, the July release of Drake's fifth album marked the first global artist takeover on Spotify. And with the presence of tracks on Rap Caviar, that has over 9.8 million followers, Get Turnt with 4 million followers, and Signed XOXO with 1.4 million followers, helping the album equivalent units and resulting in the album being streamed over 10 million times in just an hour. On top of that, his face was emblazed across playlists that he wasn't even on. A move that led some Spotify streamers to ask for a refund, this campaign was the logical conclusion of a culture where playlisting is now as sought after and is rumored to be just as for sale as primetime radio placement once was. Whether they're consolidating their efforts in a playlist or still pursuing traditional methods, all evidence suggests that Payola's existence is both hip-hop and the music industry at large's worst kept secret. Now, as Ack, Paul Porter, and even disgruntled Spotify users suggest, it may be free of the threat of, but that doesn't mean a you scratch our back, we scratch yours dynamic doesn't still remain in place. So, while the days of deals under the table may resemble something entirely different today, as long as the genre is bound to the major labels and their codes of conduct, Payola will always have a foothold in not only what we listen to, but who rises to the top of the hip-hop game.